Hello, welcome back. Uh, this, in this video, we're going to look at uh, various measures of location. Specifically here, we're going to look at mean, median, and mode. Now, if, uh, if I begin with the discussion on mean, this is one that you've probably heard of. You've probably calculated it before. It usually goes by the name average. Uh, more specifically, uh, the type of mean that we're going to look at here, and the one that you're probably most aware of, uh, is called an arithmetic mean. And this is a mean that is had by adding, adding your data points together and dividing by the number of, of data points that you have. So, for example, if you have uh, 5, 5, 7, 10, 14, if those are your different data points that you're working with, then in order to calculate the mean, I'm just getting myself a calculator, then you add these together, 5 plus 5 plus 7 plus 10 plus 14, so that equals 41. So here I have uh, my mean is 41 divided by, well, how many observations do I have? One, two, three, four, five observations. Divide that by five. And here we get what is called our arithmetic mean, which is 8.2. So this value of 8.2 is one measure of what we call central tendency or central location. It's a measure of roughly the middle. In this case, 8.2 is somewhere around here. It's roughly the middle of that data set. Now, one of the characteristics about this mean, this arithmetic mean, is that it is influenced by the, the value of those numbers. If this wasn't a 14, if this was instead a 146, well, you can imagine this numerator is going to be much larger. We still have five observations, so this ratio is going to end up being a lot larger, meaning our measure of mean is going to be somewhere way out here. So having different values within your data set influences where that mean, where that arithmetic mean uh, will will fall. This is opposed to the median. The other measure of, of central tendency or central location uh, but really the median doesn't pay a lot of attention to the, the magnitude of those observations. If I start off here with my original data set, so if I get rid of that 6 and here we just have 14, what is my median? Well, the median is that value where 50% of your observations are greater than or equal to the median, and 50% of your observations are less than or equal to the median. So in this exercise, where I have five observations here, my median is this point right in the middle. It's a 7. 50% uh, of my observations are greater than or equal to, and 50% are down here. So it's really splitting it right in half. That doesn't change if this is a 14 or if this is 146. My median is still in exactly the same location. So unlike the mean, the median is not influenced by the relative magnitude of those uh, values, of those data points. The mode, uh, is similar in the sense that it's not impacted by the magnitude of any given observation, but the mode is, is uh, identified by finding the observation that occurs with the highest frequency. So in this case, I have two fives, a seven, a ten. Let's go back to our 14. So I have here the, the fives occur twice. Each of the other values only occur once, so this is then my mode. So it's possible to have one mode. If I had another 14, I could have two modes, and we would call this uh, bimodal. If I had uh, another 10, I have two fives, two tens, two fourteens, then we would call it multimodal. And so we can have as many modes, uh, really any number of modes. Um, 
it's of relatively little value at this point to to get into the discussion of, of multimodal uh, data sets that may come up a little bit later when we talk about uh, probability uh, in some of the later modules of this course now I want to come back before we do this exercise specifically I want to come back to this discussion on the mean um, partly because as much as you're aware of how to calculate it um, you've probably done it before I want to just briefly talk about uh, the formal notation uh, of the formula that is used and that you've probably used without even knowing it uh, for calculating a, a, a mean an arithmetic mean so what we're gonna do I'll work with the same uh, data set of these five observations and I'm just going to replace or give each one sort of an identifier. So I'll call each of these values x1, x2, x3, uh, x4, and x5. So these different x's, these can really take on any value. Okay, so our 5 in, in the first case, our first observation, you know, this 5, I can denote it, this is x1, this is my first observation. Uh, x4, this is my fourth observation. In this case, it happens to be 10. Uh, out here, x5 is, in this case, 14. This is my fifth observation. My data set consists of a total of five observations, so I would say n equals, in this example, 5. Okay, now notice that n equals 5, so I have 5 observations. My last observation, that subscript, that 5, is the, the, exactly the same as the number of observations that I have. Okay, maybe that's obvious, um, I don't know. So when we're calculating the mean, uh, regardless of how many observations we have, we're adding together x1 plus x2 plus x3. In this case, I'll work with just these 5 observations. We're adding together all of our observations and we're dividing it by n, the number of observations that we have. This is probably obvious. You've probably been doing this uh, anytime you've calculated a mean. Now, when we write the formula, the more generic formula for a mean, what we'll use, the notation, is this symbol here, which means the sum of, so the sum of, so adding all of these different observations together, the sum of xi, where i is just an index, i is a placeholder, and it takes on every value from 1 through to n. So this is just a shorthand way of writing what I've got right here in the numerator. So it's the sum of x equals 1, Here's 1, x equals 2, uh, i equals 3, sorry, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, all the way to n, representing however many observations we have in that data set. And then finally, once we take the sum and we've added all of these observations together, then we divide by n, and that's just the same as what we've done here. So for our means, this is the formula that we're using, that we've always used. You've probably used it before without really looking at it in this format. And if we're calculating what we call a sample mean, then this is denoted by x bar. So what I mean by a sample mean is it's a subset of the population. So in this example, I have a share of 30 companies uh, on the Dow Jones. This is only 30 companies. This isn't all of the companies. It's not the full population of companies. This is just a sample of 30. It's a subset of 30. So here the notation for a sample is X bar. Okay, so that's maybe a little bit more detail than you want um, at this point of how to calculate a mean, but the reason why I want to discuss it is because this is the really the simplest formula that we're going to uh, encounter in this in this sequence of videos, uh, and I, I I really want whoever whoever's watching to understand this notation and understand these formulas because as we progress through the more difficult material, uh, these types of formulas are going to evolve and are going to grow and are going to become increasingly complex. So it's very helpful if at this stage in the game you have a good understanding and a good degree of comfort 
uh, working with this kind of notation because it's going to be following us for a while. Okay, so enough about this. Let's get into uh, our, our, our exercise here. So we've got this uh, list of 30 companies. We want to calculate the mean, median, and mode uh, share price. Now, I think I've given myself a cheat here. So I've already listed the companies. I've relisted the companies in one column from smallest value to the largest value. Now, sorting your data like this uh, is helpful for uh, at least two things. One, uh, it's really imperative to have it sorted like this in order to identify the median value. So that value that lies right in the middle of the data set. So it's imperative for identifying the median. For identifying the mode, it's also helpful because having it sorted from smallest to largest any values that repeat themselves, which is necessary for identifying a mode, they'll all be grouped together. And so it's much easier to see repeating observations because they're all grouped together. So let's, let's start off with the mode because really that's probably the easiest one to spot. We're just looking for observations uh, that repeat. So as I go through, I'm just gonna look through and say, well, there's two 30s, there's two 51s, uh, there's two 100s, there's two 132s, and I don't see any observation that repeats more than twice. If, if we had an observation that repeated three or four or five times, then these pairs that I've identified here are, are no longer relevant. Um, but because the highest frequency of the observation is two, uh, then it becomes relevant. And I have, it looks like three of ob uh, four observations, one, two, three, four observations, each repeating twice, none that repeat more than twice. So these values 30, 51, 100, and 132, those are all my modes. So there's one mode, two. So this data set is what we would call multimodal. Uh, it has multiple modes, it has multiple observations that repeat uh, at the same frequency uh, more than any others, okay? So there's our mode. Uh, let's find our median. So when we've got a nice, uh, a bigger data set like this, there's different ways that we can go about finding a median. Uh, in another video, I'll show you a way using a, a simple formula. Uh, in this exercise, let's just do it sort of the manual way, where we'll go through and eliminate observations, starting with the smallest and the largest. And so if we just go through our data set and eliminate, my pen's not lining up, and eliminate individual observations, small and large, until we converge to something in the middle. This would be a lot easier if my pen lined up properly on the screen. And so here we are, is that gonna, is that right? With a median, this is not right because I have an even number of observations, so I can't have fallen directly on to one observation. If I have an even number uh, of observations, then I, I must narrow down and be left with a pair of observations. What I did right there, I, I went through this exercise and I came to one observation. Well, that can't be the case because I know I have 30 observations here. Uh, so I need to finish at a pair of observations. So let me try this again. And hopefully I'll converge to a pair. Otherwise, I know I've got a larger mistake that I'll need to deal with. There. So now we've gone through and I've gotten down to here this pair of, of observations, 80 and 77. I don't want to erase those in the same sense that I've erased or deleted the others because then I'm left with nothing and that's not really helpful uh, in identifying uh, my, my median. So what I want to do now is find the middle uh, of those two remaining observations. So in this case, it's, uh, it's just gonna be 
80 plus 77 divided by 2. And so let me get my calculator. 80 plus 77 divided by 2. So that gives me 78.5. And so that's my median. So half of my observations are less than 78.5, and half of my observations are greater than 78.5. Okay, so we've got our modes, four modes, multimodal, and we have our median. Uh, now let's calculate our mean. And so our mean here, this is going to be x bar equals, and our formula again, this is looking tedious. Let me actually change my color. So x bar equals, so the sum observations xi is i equals 1 through n, and n in this case is 30, because I know I have 30 observations, divided by n, uh, which is 30. So I'm going to erase all of my blue lines here, so I can see my observations better. Okay, now I need my calculator. And let's uh, just go through with this calculation. It might take a few seconds. You're welcome to fast forward a little bit. I'm just going to punch in each of these numbers, add them together, and divide by 30. So let's get started. 27 plus 30 plus 30. Almost there, 129, 132, 132, 148, 155, 168. So 2558 is the numerator divided by 30 equals 85.26. So this is 85.26 is my mean. So this is my average share price of these 30 uh, different companies uh, taken off of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Okay, so there we have uh, our mean, our median, and our four modes in this case uh, for the sample of 30 shares uh, from the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. I hope that has helped. I'm um, going on to 18 minutes. It's a little bit longer than I wanted, uh, but I really think it's important to have spent some time going over the details and, and the notation and the formula for something that is understandably a simple complex, uh, simple concept, simple calculation. Uh, but as I said before, the more comfortable you are with this notation at this point, uh, the better off you'll be as the material progresses and evolves into more difficult uh, concepts. Okay, thank you very much for watching.